everyone. Welcome to Kids on the Move Online. As you can see, I'm doing some chalk, trying to get my creative juices going. I'm working on a flower right now. I already did a pig. Got a cross in the sun. Some goldfish, not the kind you want to eat. It's chalk. And a purple platypus, because why not make it purple? I'm being creative. Um, you might have noticed I'm talking a lot about creativity, and you're going to hear a lot about that later today. But before we do that, I'm going to fold my very chalky hands so we can pray together. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for all of our friends who have joined us today. And we're so grateful that we can still have Kids Church even when we're all spread out in our different houses. And we ask that you give us listening ears so we can hear the message that you have for us today and that you would teach us how to apply it to our lives. We love you so much, Jesus. Thank you. And in your name we pray. Amen. Well, I'll see you guys in a little bit, but for now, you're going to talk to Mrs. Jenny. Oh, hey! Good morning, guys! I am just out here this morning enjoying this beautiful weather we have in this beautiful place that we live. My name is Jenny, and I am so glad to have you back for a new month of Kids on the Move. This month, our theme is indescribable. Your creator has no limits. Did you know that you have a creator? Who is that creator? It's God. Everything living that we see around us has been created for us by God, including the incredible creation of you. God's creativity is infinite. Do you know what the word infinite means? Infinite means that it's limitless. There's no way for us to calculate or measure the creativity of God. So to get started this morning, we're gonna do a little activity that helps show us some of God's creativity. I want you to take a few seconds and go grab a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil or marker, something that you can write or draw with, and then come meet me right back here. Great. Now that you have your paper and something to write or draw with, I'm going to call out the names of some animals. And I want you to take your best guess as to what these animals look like and choose one of them to draw. Now there's no right or wrong answer. I just want you to draw whatever pops into your mind when you think of one of these animals that you're going to choose. Okay? I'm going to list off a few. I'm going to say them through a couple times. But then they'll also be on your screen while we take a break to draw so you can see them and decide which one you want to do. But the animals that we're going to choose from are a Venus flytrap, a brown eye moth, a platypus, a seahorse, a blue poison dart frog, and a bush baby. Okay, so one more time, the animals you're going to choose from are a Venus flytrap, a brown eye moth, a platypus, a seahorse, a blue poison dart frog, and a bush baby. Now, we're all gonna stop, we're gonna take two minutes, and I want you to draw one of these, however it comes to your mind and what you think they look like, okay? Ready? Here we go. Everything he does, he keeps his promises, we know because, yeah, the word of the Lord holds still, he can 
welcome, welcome back. Okay, now that you have drawn one of these pictures and what you think they look like, I'm gonna show you some pictures of what these animals actually look like. Here's a Venus flytrap. The brown eye moth. Here's a platypus. Here's a seahorse. Have you ever seen or heard of a blue poison dart frog? I haven't. And here's a bush baby. Wow, you guys were all so creative with your pictures. Just look at all the different things that we can see in nature. Things that maybe seem ordinary and other things that just seem extraordinary. Today, we're gonna hear what the variety of things in the world show us about God and how amazing he is. But before we do that and move on, let's all stop, stand up, and take a few minutes to worship the God who created us. Hi again! I hope you had fun singing to God in worship. You know, there's a lot of reasons why we worship God, like for his many blessings for us, for his love, for sending us Jesus. But for me, the thing that makes it easiest to worship God is when I think about his creation. You know, this big, magnificent, weird, wacky, crazy creative world we live in. There's a whole bunch of songs that already talk about God as creator, like So Will I, or How Great Thou Art, This Is My Father's World, or Indescribable. And if you don't know those songs, I'm sure someone in your family knows them and would love to sing them for you. And then you're going to get them stuck in your head and you'll be praising God as creator all day. Well, that brings us to today's bottom line about God as creator. The bottom line today is there's no limit to God's creativity. God is 
infinitely great and smart and creative to make a world like ours. Have you heard of these really weird creative things God has made? So first up, we have the infamous platypus, which is a strange sort of beaver and duck hybrid. And even though it's a mammal, it lays eggs, just to confuse scientists. What is this, you may ask? A worm. Yep, that's right. It's a worm. This is a special kind that lives in the ocean, and it is named a Christmas tree worm, and I'm sure you can understand why. This weird fellow is a bird of paradise doing a super strange dance in order to attract a wife, and it's super hilarious. You should definitely ask your parents to look up a video for you. Meanwhile, even though this may look like a bird, it's actually a flower, pretending to be a bird, because why not? And another fun plant is this one, which I've actually grown before, and you can poke the leaves and they fold up, which is very fun to watch. One last plant before we get back to some animals. This is a quartz flower, which can apparently grow to be eight feet tall, and rather than smelling like a nice pretty flower, it stinks really badly. Here we have my absolute favorite animal in the whole world, the cuttlefish. Not only can it change the color of its skin, but it can do it in patterns that hypnotizes its prey, which is so cool. I don't even, I can't contain myself. And then lastly, the weird thing growing out of this ant is a fungus. And not just any fungus, it's a fungus that turned this ant into a zombie. I promise I'm not making this up. You should look it up. And beyond all the creative things on our planet, there's the size of the whole universe. I can't even understand how there's enough space for light to travel for a whole year, let alone the billions of light years that exist in the universe. And in the universe, there's all kinds of really cool things, like this nebula that's called the Eye of God. Wow, God's creation is so cool. It blows my mind. I'll never get tired of talking about it. And you know, that same God who created the crazy complex cells that make up your body also made you unique, and he made you in his own image. That means that you could be creative too. And it's kind of crazy that God was so creative that he created creatures that could also be creative. It kind of hurts my brain. But anyway, humans are creative too, and we get that capacity from God. And while humans have made a lot of really neat things over all of human history, they usually get their inspiration from the things that God has already made. Like sonar we invented, we got the idea from dolphins and bats. Or Velcro that maybe you used to tie your shoes before you knew how to use actual shoelaces. That idea came from plants with these really sticky seeds that stay on animal fur. And so God is way more creative and powerful than we humans will ever be. And because of that, we want to praise him. Now let's learn our similarly related Bible verse. Welcome back, guys. We are ready for this month's Bible verse. Our Bible verse for this month is Psalm 145.3. And it says, Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. What an awesome verse this is for us to tell and remember how great God is, right? Yeah. So I was wondering if you guys could help me think of some other words about God that could help us replace the word great. What else can we say about God? Now, we're going to come up with some words here and write down, but I want you, wherever you are, to think of what words you would say to describe God. And you could even type it in the comments as you're watching this. You can just say it out loud. But let's think of some other words that we can use to describe God. Okay? So, Lord, you are great. Ellie, Isaac, Drew, and Wesley, can you guys help me think of some other words besides great that help us describe who God is? What words can you think of? Well, I was thinking maybe loving. Loving, that's an awesome one. So we could say, Lord, you are loving. loving. I 
I love that because God is loving, right? Okay, what other words can we think of? People. People. Well, God loves people. That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> but what other words can we think about to describe who God is? Can you think of one, Isaac? When you think of God, what do you think of? Faithful. Faithful. That's an awesome one. He does. God provides for us, right? Mm -hmm. He's our provider. That's awesome. Wesley said he gives us food and what we need. So he is our provider. I'm going to say and put up forgiving. Lord, you are forgiving. That's something that I'm always thankful for because there's a lot of times where I just, I mess up and I need God's forgiveness. And I'm so glad that he always forgives me. What else? Hmm. Is God kind? Yes. yes. He is. God is very kind. God is kind. He's graceful. Graceful, yep. That's a good one, too. Those are all great words. So we came up with, Lord, you are loving. Lord, you are our provider. Lord, you are faithful. Lord, you are kind. Lord, you are forgiving. Lord, you are graceful. Those are all awesome words to help us remember who God is. So as you go about your week and maybe you're thinking about this verse, you can take these words that you've thought of and remember all the things that God is to us. And one way that God is great is in his fact that he is creative. In fact, there is absolutely no limit to God's creativity. He showed us that when he made all the amazing things in the world that's around us. But you know what? Even if the whole world was filled with books and books, of words to tell us about God, we would still need more books and more words to describe how great God is. God's greatness is truly indescribable. His creation is amazing. In today's Bible story, we are going to hear about the very best creation of all time. Actually, it was the first creation of all time. It is where creativity was born. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Genesis, chapters 1 and 2. In the beginning, the very beginning, before the first breath, before the first flash of color, before the first moment in time, there was nothing. Nothing. Nothing except God. But when God saw nothing, he saw a blank canvas. He saw the perfect backdrop for a work of art beyond imagination. So, God created. From absolutely nothing, He brought forth the heavens and the earth. But there was no shape or form. God's Spirit hovered over the dark emptiness. Then, God called out, Let there be light. Brilliant light shattered the darkness like golden trumpets on a still morning. Bright rays shimmered and danced in all the hues of the rainbow. God saw the light was good. He divided the light from the dark, calling the light day and the darkness night. Evening and morning together shaped the very first day of all time. Then God said, Let there be a huge space between the waters. Let it separate water from water. By his words alone, God shifted the waters, leaving a vast arching space above. 
the sky. Evening and morning rolled past, the second day. God lifted his voice again. Let the water under the sky be gathered into one place. Let ground appear. Dry land shrugged its way out of the water. Islands and vast continents and gritty deserts and towering mountains. God called the dry ground land and he called all the gathered waters seas. But God had even bigger plans for this day. Let the land produce plants and let there be trees on the land. In moments, tall grasses unfurled across the plains and giant redwoods shot up from the dirt. Flowers and grapevines and carrots and corn sprouted and flourished. God saw that all of it was good. That evening and morning closed out the third day. Let there be lights in the huge space of the sky. Let them separate the day from the night. At the sound of God's voice, the blazing sun exploded into being. The silvery moon spun out. Stars and galaxies flooded into space, filling the universe. Pew, pew, pew. God set the sun to rule the day and the moon to rule the night. And God saw it was good. That evening and morning made up the fourth day. But God wasn't done painting his masterpiece just yet. Let the seas be filled with living things. Let birds fly above the earth and across the huge space of the sky. Instantly, the seas and rivers and ponds writhed with dolphins and octopi, salmon and minnows. Eagles soared and bluebirds nested while ostriches stretched their long necks. God saw they were good. That evening and morning formed the fifth day, but God kept working on his creation. Let there be livestock and creatures that move along the ground and wild animals. At once, animals of every kind appeared. Elephants thundered through the forests and squirrels darted up tree trunks. Monkeys chattered and pigs rolled happily in the mud. God saw it was all good, but he had one more creation in mind. Let us make human beings so that they are like us. Let them rule over the fish and the birds. Let them rule over all the animals. Then with his own hands, God formed the very first man and the very first woman, Adam and Eve. I am me. And you are you. And this place, it's beyond words. Unlike the animals, God made people in his image to reflect him. Have children and fill the earth. Rule over the fish and the birds and every living creature. I am giving you every plant on the earth for food. God looked over everything he had created and saw that it was very good. That evening and morning were the sixth day. And on the seventh day, God rested. <laughs> I mean, his work was finished. His glorious creation was complete. But because God had formed people in his image, they too could reflect his imagination and creativity. The possibilities ahead of them were endless. What a great story. Can you believe how creative God is? We learned today that in the beginning, God created everything. He is so creative. Let's review real quick all of the things that God made when he first created. He made light. He made the sky, land, and seas. He made plants and trees and flowers. He made the sun, the moon, and the stars. He made those animals we talked about earlier and he made birds that were able to fly and fish to swim. And then God made his most amazing creation of all. What was it? Yes, God made people. God made Adam and Eve in his own image. When we say that God made people in his own image, we mean that God made people to think, to 
feel and to act just a tiny bit like him. Isn't that amazing? There is no limit to God's creativity. So what's one of your favorite things that God made? One of my favorite things that God made is the sun. I love how the sun feels when I go outside. Sometimes when I feel the warm sun, I imagine that it's God I'm feeling and then I know that he is with me. I feel God's love for me when I am out in creation. It has been a great day today at Kids on the Move and I hope today has helped you remember that there is absolutely no limit to God's creativity, including how amazing and unique he made you. Thanks, Mrs. Jenny, for teaching our lesson today. I don't know about you guys, but all this talk of God's creation really made me want to grab my hiking boots so that I can go appreciate God's creativity and praise Him while doing it. But even if you felt that way too, you shouldn't go just yet. First, you should get on the Zoom call with your classes. I'm sure your teachers would be very excited to see you and you can all talk about your favorite ways to be creative or maybe your favorite weird animal that God made and your parents received the link for the Zoom call in their email from the church this week. Also, don't forget to join us for Online Kids on the Move again next week at the same time. And before we go, I'm gonna pray for us. So let's pray. God, you are so great. You alone are worthy of our praise. We can't even understand how great you are. When we look around at all the things you made, we can see that there's no limit to your creativity. Thank you, God, for making each one of us in your image. Remind us every time we look in the mirror that we were made to reflect a little bit of you to the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks for joining us, and I'm going to go on a hike now. Goodbye.